What's up everybody? Unrested back again out here on a muggy day here in July. I'm walking down uh, the middle of Abisubashi and about to take you through pretty much what is Osaka's main shopping district. And of course, you know, uh, Osaka has a lot of famous places as far as shopping and is known for quite having a huge array of different types of fashion and clothing and knickknacks and omiyage you can bring home. But what the big thing I want to show you here is probably the most popular site for Osaka's shopping district. And that is kind of a trifold of Abisubashi, Shinsaibashi, and Amemura. And I'm just gonna walk through these different areas. Once in a while I'll cut back to myself to give you a little bit of information, but otherwise I think it's best if I just shut up and show you the site. section connecting Shinsaibashi. It's a very loud area and very well traversed every day by huge crowds that you'll find. I myself am about to cross over right here Shinsaibashi and I'll take you along to show you a little bit more of what's in store here. take a stop right here really quick because this is not actually any of the areas that I mentioned today it's actually called Dotan Buddy and this is kind of the epicenter of that trifold of shopping area that I talked about today it has the very famous Dotan Buddy bridge which I've shot many a video on you've seen in the background with Glico man and stuff like that but it's also a really cool connector for all the different places and has a bunch of restaurants that are well known throughout Japan a lot of chains of restaurants have their best uh, little pub right here in this area. Uh, if you do ever stop in this area, just be ready to pay some expensive prices for any restaurants that you would eat at here. Otherwise, it's a great place for shopping, eating, and just generally enjoying yourself. Let's continue on and I'm going to move over to the other section that is the Shinsaibashi shopping area across the Dotanbori Bridge.
behind me real quick is a very famous little shop that you'll even see sometimes in the game uh, Yakuza if you ever bought the English version of the game or I should say the English subtitled version of the game. That is Don Quixote out there named after the very famous stories from Europe. Um, they are stores that are kind of like uh, Japan's version of like a Walmart but maybe a little more wacky with some of the furniture or house accessories that you would buy there. So. It's got its own kind of appeal to people who are kind of living on their own uh, for the first time and kind of are in between those wild college year stages and kind of becoming a professional. It's got a lot of great stuff for them to buy. I know I myself, when I first got to Japan and had my own place by myself, actually bought quite a few cheap pieces of furniture that I still have today. They stuck around. They're not the most well-made things, but they served their purpose and they were cool at the time. If you ever get here, I definitely suggest you go check it out. You can see this one here in Osaka has a very famous uh, Ferris wheel that, if you've ever read the Gantz uh, manga, this is actually featured in there in uh, the giant statue of the god Abisu who comes to life and starts battling him. So it's made it even more of an epic type famous place.
exotic shops. Sadly, one thing I came to realize quite quickly when I did start to really explore uh, the really shopping districts of uh, Osaka and any other prefecture in Japan for that matter, that it, a good deal of them are taken up by pachinko places, um, game centers, and uh, clothing stores or restaurants that we already have in Western countries. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of those things, especially if you love pachinko or game centers, which I, I do love game centers. I'm not such a big fan of pachinko due to the loud noises and cigarette smoke, but uh, you will find that a, a huge portion of these areas are actually taken up by that. So although you should get excited and you will enjoy it, and I promise you it will be like a bunch of treasure troves to explore the different shopping areas around here, do be ready that quite a few of those when you walk in and you don't know what it is because you can't read kanji yet, you'll find out it's just one of those ones I've already mentioned and they're pretty much uh, carbon copies of one another. For the most part, I never usually film inside stores or businesses because you really shouldn't. And I'm going to go ahead and take my camera into this one because number one, there's no camera signs that say no filming. And number two, I feel like some of you probably really want to know what a game center looks like here in Japan. I've gotten that question quite a bit, so I'm going to just try and walk around a little bit discreetly with my camera and hopefully get you guys some good shots.
like too. Hopefully you can hear me through all this music. Result. And I made a few unrested JFAC picks that I can go ahead and use on this video in future videos. So always remember, it's not something I advise, but when you go into places in Japan, for the most part, privacy is a time-honored tradition in Japan. So you don't really want to go into every shop, start trying to film everything. If you can, try to keep people's faces out of it, because people really don't want that kind of privacy broken. And just try to be respectful of people's places of business as well. If there's a sign on the front that says no cameras as soon as you walk in, and it will be the universal sign of a slash through the actual picture of a camera, Please respect that and don't make a bad name for all of us Gaijin by going in there and filming. Continuing on, we've just crossed the street over to the opposite side of the Dotanbari Shinsaibashi area. And on the opposite side, you've got uh, across from Mitsuji, the main road through here, is uh, the whole shopping district known as Amemura. And I've done a video on this before, specifically called Amemura, and it talked a little bit about fashion in this area. Nonetheless, I didn't really get a chance to actually walk you through and show you the different types of stores and fashion and clothing that's sold over here. So I thought I'd take some time to do that today and show you around, maybe even if I get a chance, show you a few of my favorite shops from the outside. I can't really go in. Let's go. Right out in the distance behind me, you see the Dotanbari Bridge crossing. And this area that we're in right now, there's not a lot of shops to actually go to. Uh, this is more of an area that's covered in love hotels. And if you don't know what a love hotel is, please go look it up. I don't want to get too descriptive, but pretty much it's a hotel that you rent by the hour for no other reason than to bring a date back to do the they're dirty, if you know what I mean. And not have to, do, not have to actually bring her back to your uh, Apartment because a lot of very young couples who are single uh, tend to have apartments that are only about a one one room size big. That's it. They're just like a small, tiny room, 
what most in America would consider closet size apartments and uh, you usually don't have enough room to uh, you know operate in your own if you've got it completely crowded with your own clothing furniture etc etc so that's what this district's kind of for I know a little bit sleazy but hey I want to give you all aspects of Japan right Here's one store I was talking about that I like to shop at a little bit. It's got some really crazy fashion called the Satanic Territory. This shop has been here since 1996, which is actually quite a long time to be a distributor here in this area of any kind of clothing or anything like that. And uh, most shops close really quick after they open. So this shop's been around here for a long time. It's got some great stuff. I love everything that I buy here because it's all originally made by the shop owner who is really, I mean, he is, uh, how should I say, like, really into the whole satanic culture. This shop is even like a little underground place where uh, it's like a tiny cave and he stores all kinds of weird relics that he collects along with the clothing that he personally makes. Really crazy shop to check out. Maybe a little scary for some of you. Nonetheless, if you get a chance, check it out. Behind me here is another little underground area full of bars. Uh, it's a sweet little place to check out for really genre-sided music such as in a bar that completely rotates around a complete genre. Uh, a lot of these change out quite often because bars tend not to survive here in the Amimode area. It's expensive rent and the customer competition is really quite hard, but you will get a chance to check out some cool stuff while it lasts. And I suggest that you always come to check out this little underground area here where all the bars are completely underground. The ceiling's so low that you almost have to duck in some spots and it's really interesting.
favorite little bars to go to. Room 19. Uh, I was actually introduced to this bar by a friend and it's a really simplistic little sign here to get you in and not really exposed too much to a lot of the other culture around Japan. Mostly for the fact that it's kind of the counterculture club that you would expect it to be. A lot of tattooed people, uh, a lot of people into all different types of lifestyles and a really interesting mix of those into kind of the underground scene here in Japan. Um, if that's not really your thing or maybe you're kind of into preppy type stuff or want to look for a more, uh, should I say, mainstream club, this is not the place for you to go. Nonetheless, if you're into the same type of stuff that I am, uh, you know, a lot of underground music and things like that, that's a great club to check out. One of my favorite and one that was recommended to me by a friend and I've loved it ever since. Another place I wanted to stop, Chopsticks Tattoo. That's actually where you see the tattoo that I have on my arm all the time, my big full sleeve here at Chopsticks. And uh, it's also where I interviewed uh, Benny Hori, uh, as you may remember on the old tattoo video I did. So here's the shop that he works at here down in Amemura. Uh, I definitely recommend if you're here to get some ink while you're in Japan, check it out. Chopsticks Tattoo. I know they won't mind me putting this on there. There's their website. Check it out. Well guys, that's your little tour here through the area that is Dotanbori, Shinsai Bashi, Ebisu Bashi, and Ame Mura. I hope you enjoyed that little tour. I hope you gave you a little bit of tips and stuff on what you might want to check out when you're here. Until next time, I'm on Rest It. This is JFAC. Have a good one.